the one time I don't have a comedic intro idea for a video. Episode of Spin It Reviews, and today I'm introducing my new collab review of the new Weird Al Yankovic album Mandatory Fun, which I did with the YouTuber Viral Rack. Now, I recommend that you guys check out his channel. He does a lot of discography reviews, the occasional Let's Play, um, all good stuff, um, which of course is linked here in the description everywhere. Um, and I also am in the process of recording a couple other collab reviews, um, those being um, of the new Mastodon one, which should be up on his channel within a few days, um, and on the new Jack White one, which should be coming up in the near future. But without any further ado, here we go. So, oh, it's generally agreed that we're both pretty pretty big Weird Al fans. Um, where do you think this al new album, Mandatory Fun, sort of stands in terms of his discography? I feel like, uh, out of his modern work, this is the best thing I've seen of him since maybe Poodle Hat, because I really love Poodle Hat. Um, I think Straight Outta Linwood and Alpocalypse were good, but this has some of his best material I've heard in a long time, personally. Yeah, I, um, I would um, say it's definitely one of his better ones. Like, I would agree, like, he's had, like, a little weak spot here and there, you know, maybe Poke Party was a little front-heavy, or maybe there are just little duds here and there, which is inevitable for a comedic artist to me. Yeah. Um, but personally, I did really love uh, Alpocalypse. Maybe it's just cut and Straight Out Linwood, but maybe it's because like Straight Out Linwood was basically the first album I ever like anticipated. Maybe it makes you feel old. Um, ah. But yeah, this is definitely one of his uh, better ones. And see, I feel like as much as I loved Alpocalypse, like track for track, I feel like something that kind of dragged it down was the fact that because there are five years between that and Straight Out Linwood. Um, it sort of made some of the parodies he did of, like, You Belong With Me, and just, like, a couple other parodies on there, it made them sort of not timely, in a way. Whereas this, like, it seems to keep strictly in, like, the 2013, early 2014 kind of realm. And yeah. in a way, I feel like that kind of helps this stay a little more relevant than, uh, than the last one. I could agree with that, because I feel like out of the last album... The only song of his that is even relevant now is Perform This Way. And it's not the only good parody on there, but, like, I would agree. This one feels a little more timely as a record. Even now, again, now, especially with stuff like Blurred Lines and stuff, are still talked about today. So I definitely, I could agree with that. And, I mean, thanks in part to what Robin's done since then, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it continues to hold his relevancy, yeah. Shameless plug for my other review. Go watch it. It's funny and very informative. I thought it was funny because you got really yeah. mad. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was just me. But, yeah, uh... it, it, it's a rare gem. But uh, anyway, anyway, back to this. Um, You know, something I've noticed in sort of Weird Al's um, humor over the years, like, it's obviously, like, does tend to be kind of surface level. Like, even Weird Al himself admits that Eat It was kind of the most obvious parody you could do of Beat It. Yeah. Uh, but, but... It seems like over the last few albums, like maybe since a little bit on Straight Outta Linwood, but also really on Apocalypse, and especially more on this, there seems to be a bit more cleverness to the humor, you know, a little bit of social commentary in a way. Well, I feel like even on Running With Scissors there were songs like that, like Jerry Springer, oh, uh, yeah. the parody of One Week that he did. Or they may not be incredibly social commentary, but All About the Pentiums is like a parody right. you wouldn't expect for a song like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, but... And, you know, I'm talking about, like, Sword of Australia and Linwood, like, songs like, uh, Don't Download This Song, or... Um, yeah. Um, you know, so, so that, and then translated onto, um, on, uh, Alpocalypse, on songs like, especially Skipper Dan. That was, like, a, sort of a dark, ironic sense of humor that I don't think I've ever, I've ever um, heard from him before, if I'm not mistaken. Um, really? And, <laughs> I mean, I feel like, I mean, maybe it's, I disagree, I feel like... He's gone much more sinister, like the night Santa went crazy or Christmas. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, that's like straightforwardly. Maybe dark is the wrong word, but like that sort of like ironic, like like you don't really get it until a year after you hear it kind of okay. thing. Yeah, I guess. You yeah, know, like, something a little more layered. Um, by comparison, um, because I know like he's not like, you know what I mean. Um, but um, yeah. but yeah, I feel like this sort of does continue that whole um thing with songs like um. Lame claim to fame, or um, 
Yeah, no, even, even, or, even, or, or even like, other than like, or even like a foil. Um, like yeah. there, are, there are songs like they kind of go in these interesting, like clever social com- social commentary places, like with foil, sort of. Uh, you know, sorry to spoil, but like talking about like the paranoia people have about the Illuminati. Yeah. And, uh, well, even in the sense of making a Crosby, Stills and Nash song, just a mission statement for a company. That in itself is kind of ironic humor, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, yeah it's like, if I did have to pick a least favorite on there, it would probably be that, but mostly because like I don't entirely relate to like the the office j- jargon in a way. I kind of get what it's going for, but it's personally not my kind of thing. But I get why someone would would really connect with that. See, um, and Lame claim to fame, like that, like I said earlier, that one taps into like that whole thing nowadays, like people trying so hard to be famous by any me- by even the slightest reasons. Yeah, um, and, and just like how it gets more and more absurd as it goes along, that's just that just really did it for me. Yeah, no, I thought. Um, I mean, personally, it maybe was my least favorite original song. It wasn't my least favorite song on the album, Lane Claim to Fame. I felt like this album starts honestly a little weaker than his uh, other records, but it really gets better by the end of it. Yeah, um, yeah I, I would say that at Handy is maybe it's probably the most obvious. On the, on the album where it's like, oh, it's like, take that, and then you make it about a handyman, and then you just like, yeah. write about that. Um, but it was it still had a lot of funny lines, obviously. Um, yeah. I, I would say that it's not really as much of like a, a mission statement, pun intended, as like a perform this way or like a white and nerdy. Yeah. I feel like maybe was a little better to open with a little bit of a weaker parody, but I mean, that's not to say it's bad. There really wasn't a whole lot in terms of comedy that I thought was poor. Really, the one thing on here I thought was really weak was the radioactive parody. Um, I, I mean, I would say it's not really the best one there, but I, it like still had some funny lines on it, and like I kind of knew where it was gonna go. But I I just kind of love like the contrast between like the big booming like bombast against like radioactive I imagine dragons, and then just yeah. like makes it about the most lethargic thing possible, you know? I just felt like it was a little bit like retreading old water, because on um, Poodle Hat, he did Couch Potato, which was lose uh-huh. yourself, but about being lazy. I yeah, don't know, that, maybe... Yeah, that is kind of one I thought about. Um, and, you know, in some more, sort of similar kind of way, um, I, from a mission statement, I got a lot of uh, Dog Eat Dog flashbacks, and I really like Dog Eat Dog. Yeah, I can, I can I, see I, that. I feel like I got a little more out of that one, um, but... But still, I wouldn't say it's an entirely retread, but, you know... Similar it's piece. similar. Yeah, it's, 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 there's some similarities there. Um, but really, aside from those, I mean, I think like there's a lot of strong things on this. Because I kind of went through... Because when taking notes for this record, I kind of thought, how do I do this? How do I make notes for a comedy record? Let so alone most, a one. Exactly. So mostly what I did was I kind of graded each song... As to, like, how I felt it was overall. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that we do, like, a semi-track-for-track track thing, you know? Yeah. Um, so, like, we already kind of talked about uh, Handy. That one's pretty good, but probably not the best parody on there. Um, yeah. Lame Claim to Fame, that one is one of, one of my favorite, probably one of my favorite originals on there, just because, kind of like what I mentioned earlier, um, Foil, like, you kind of like how it goes from, like, oh, you think it's just going to be another thing about food, to like nope. go, going completely opposite different. direction, exactly. Like and, uh, you, know, you know, I've heard complaints that's a little too short, but in a way, I think that actually makes it better because, like, I don't know, like, what he could put like either between those two verses or like after the the whole the second one. But personally, I feel like Royals is a song that shouldn't be as long as it is. It's a great song, but I feel like Foil does a good job of keeping it funny within its sonic style. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that um that was a good decision on his part. Yeah, like it it I think I kind of agree. It would have been hard to continue with the narrative by getting crazier and crazier. I think it was good to have just a good dichotomy of it's food, it's completely different. Well, moving on like a track for track um yeah. sports song. I thought sports song was great. Yeah, um, I, feel, I feel like a lot of people were just kind of met on it, and I can kind of see why, but. But, yeah, I thought that was kind of a funny, like, a send-up of, you know, those kind of sports, like, marching band kind of anthems. It, it epitomized everything. Because I'm not a sports guy. I'm going to be honest. I don't really watch sports. Damn. It's not my shtees. 
I could sit and watch a few, but not a whole lot. And I yeah, feel like yeah, this... I mean, I mean, like, we got the Padres, but how much is that really saying, you know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like it epitomized kind of my thought process behind people who love sports so much. And it was really well written and captured. It's, I, I love that a lot, honestly. Yeah, I imagine it's the kind of thing that, like, would connect with, like, that nerd audience that he has. Yeah, so it was a huge... I gave it an A. I thought it was a really yeah, good... Yeah, and, and, of course, word crimes. Best parody on the album. Definitely, definitely, hands down. I mean, he came up with this great idea of just something so well eloquently constructed, especially for this generation, and the fact that the video was full of just, like the original, had all of these just blatant hashtags, all this sort of stuff, really not fo focusing on what makes this generation bad, what the negatives are about this generation, and makes it such a great positive. I love it. It's a great, yeah. it's a great yeah, like, this is just, like, the, the, the new Grammar Nazi anthem, but at the same time, I feel like it, like, subtly kind of makes fun of, like, those kind of, st that's kind of stickler grammar mentality. Um, yeah. But, but, but it's, and I, of course, because I'm always the guy that corrects the literally, like, that's my thing. Like, the, the end of the rap verse, that just, like, had me in the stitches. Well, what's funny is it actually did teach me something that I had forgotten about and kind of needed to be retaught again. The less is fewer thing? No, the it's thing. Because oh. I forget that with an apostrophe, you don't use it as a possessive. Really? You forgot? Come on, I kind man. of, I throw it around, I, I switch on, it up man. all the time. Come so. on, man. C come on, son. Come Sorry. on. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. I, I, I thought I knew you. No, you thought wrong. Because it's not no, what you no, think We're it done is. with this. I'm sh oh. I don't know where to go now. I, I I'm like, what? <laughs> I, for, I forgive you. I feel anyway, good. and and see, Weird Al review should have jokes. Exactly. Um, a little bit. Okay, so uh, my own eye. See, for me, it's source. Per, first off, musically, perfect Foo Fighters impression. We can read yes. that. Yes. Um, but and lyrically, see, I feel like this is sort of in his string of songs like "Everything You Know Is Wrong" or like uh, a couple other, there are a couple other songs like that where he just. It's just basically an excuse for him to list off the most random things possible. It's just like crazy stuff. He just yeah. lists at the song and in and that kind of thing. It the see thing is that kind of thing never gets stale because it's there's just, there, there's nothing stale about just coming up with the most insane stuff. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And it just and it just gets I don't know if it gets crazier and crazier because it sets the bar so high and just like stays there. Yeah, it just kind of consistently stays absurd in the best yeah. way possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 yeah. absurd for the sake of being a big Foo Fighters parody. Exactly. It works. Yeah, and you know, since Dave Grohl obviously has a sense of humor, I really wanna want them to cover the song. I feel, yes. like, they, I feel like they would. Yes. If someone I asked. totally want that. Would be Please. Amazing. That would be a thing I need to see in the world. Yeah. Okay, and now that's what I call polka. The polka medleys. So I, feel like it, I feel like it flowed really well. Like, for... Because, I'm going to be honest, the last Polka parody, I feel like, didn't flow very well. But this one flowed a lot better. Maybe that's just me. I agree. There were, like, some more, like, breaks between them in uh, Polka Face. Yeah. Um, but, but, it, but obviously, like, a Polka medley can never be less than great. You know? Yeah. Um, and with this one, it's no exception. Although... I do kind of wish that this one had one of those like doo-wop breakdown ones, you know, oh, like yeah. one of the other ones too. Yeah, I feel like that should have happened kind of during Get Lucky. Yeah, or like um, you know, I feel like I almost feel like he could have done like a Some Nights thing, like doom bop doom na. Yes. Doo wop not a bad luck. Doo wop doom na. I call it a drop. But they wake up, I shall see your ghost. Don't laugh, so not sure. You know. I would totally that that would make that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. I think that would because I, I I agree. I feel like yeah. deserved a little bit of the doo wop love, and that makes a good sense since it's either that or uh, the other. We are young. The other fun song. Uh, I, I feel like it would have worked in that. I mean, it's a little less relevant because that single yeah. was from a few years ago. Well, but I feel I like mean, it still would have fit. I mean, some nights is from the same year. 
But, but, but I mean, Pokemon Lee for me, like, it's not really as necessary for the song to come out, like, a year ago, just because, like, he did Pumped Up Kicks, and that worked really well. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, A-plus on the Pokemon Lee is always. Oh, yeah. For sure. <clears throat> Inactive, we kind of touched on that. Like, it's good. Um, I do think it's it's a good one, but maybe not the best parody on there. Just, like, yeah. kind of runs down the typical, like, it's still funny, but it kind of runs down the typical stuff. Twelve Problems, Send Up of the Pixies. I thought it was a good idea, um, and I feel like for this sort of commentary thing that he does on a few of the back half of the record, honestly, because um, inactive that and tacky are all kind of like pseudo commentary on a lot of things happening in popular nowadays. People call the young people of today inactive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can... yeah and I, I, you mentioned it. There is that sort of like that common thread between those three in a row. I didn't even notice that, but uh, I, didn't, I mean, I, I mean, I feel like the, the only like weakness to first world problems, like cause the whole first world problems thing, it's obviously inspired by that whole meme that got popular a few years, uh, like over the last couple of years. And as a result, it's not like the most fresh idea on the album, but I still think it works really well. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, he takes something known and makes it his own. Yeah, in a and, really good way. Yeah, sort of like sort of a vocalization or like the guitar work, like. I do think he nailed that pretty spot on. Obviously, there is that more, like, kind of Paul straightforward thing, but you kind of had to in order to make it work in a way, I think. Yeah, you can't make anything that the Pixies do a good, structured song and make it funny. I mean, unless you want to, unless you want to just, like, do a parody of Here Comes My Man. Yeah. Man. Tacky. Tacky is great. It was a great first single to do, too. It's like, it showed you Weird Al could be clever again, or it could still be clever, he could still be relevant. Yeah. Or someone could make the argument of, like, oh, he's trying too hard to be relevant, he talks about tweeting and twerking, and... But, but it's like, but, you know, that just kind of better in a way, because, like, otherwise, just, like, running down, like, random... I don't know, like, I feel like that does actually make it a bit better. Yeah, because like, it it's... Adds, it adds an extra oomph to it. Exactly. Exactly. And I feel like you can't make jokes about relevancy without speaking of relevant things. Even if you're old, you still have to do it. You have to talk about YOLO and swag and tweeting and all this sort of stuff. You have to talk about YOLO and swag by Rack 2014. <laughs> but I feel like it works because he's not trying. He's just making a song about that. Exactly, exactly. And... Um... Okay, so both agree that's great. Um, yeah, and that's last, see, I see the last song. This is sort of an, an interesting one, Jackson Park Express. <laughs> I, I see this is sort of falling in line with you know those other big epics, long lines of like an album, Albuquerque, yeah. James in France, yeah. uh, Trapped in the Drive Through, or mm -hmm. uh, more recently, uh, Stop Forwarding That Crap to Me. <laughs> see, I this was another one of those more clever songs to me because. It just taps into like how people tend to overanalyze things and like relationships and stuff like that, and just like even the slightest thing is like, oh my gosh, is this person saying this and this and this. One of the smarter songs in the album to me. It's not only that; it's such a well-crafted song that even though it's so long and it's so minutely detailed, you may not even pay attention to that because it's just he has a way of making the points that he wants to strike hit without sounding dull. He has jokes that creep in at the perfect moments to kind of keep your interest on such a long, funny song. Yeah, that he, doesn't change up much. Yeah, exactly. And, like, I'm not going to spoil a joke, but there is a point where, like, okay, you know where this is going? You know, you're, you're chuckling consistently, but then there's just, like, this bomb of a joke. Or not not bomb and that's bad, but, like, this just this bombshell of a joke, and you just lose your mind, and you're exactly. sucked back in. Exactly. Like, he... You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm yes, talking about. Yes, I do know what you're talking about. Because, like, when I was listening to the song, I was like, this is pretty good, it's pretty good. And, but then, again, joke kept my interest. Okay, funny, funny. Kept a joke, kept my interest. There is that apex, but he does it throughout the song. That, yeah, like... Exactly. exactly. And, and, like, even musically, like, it's still, like, it's still really well-written musically. See, I feel like that's kind of something that, like, gets kind of overlooked. Like, even, like, as a technical songwriter for his original stuff, the guy is really talented. He is. And his band that he has with him constructs things well. I was actually watching the process. It wasn't of this record, but the behind-the-scenes of uh, Straight Outta Linwood. And he has such a really good 
attention to detail on things. And I feel like that translates well on this record, too. There's a lot of things about this that are constructed really well from a musical yeah. perspective. Yeah, okay. So oh, so overall, uh, thoughts on this album? I think literally this is some of the funniest... I'm going to say literally. Don't that makes you want to literally take a crowbar and punch you in the head. Yeah, I think this is uh, one of the funniest things he's done in a, in a long time, and it shows that the vets can show the kids how to do it. Yep. Uh, see, um, see, um, Mr. Mister Baker? Mr. Yeah, um, Mr. Mr. Bar Bartholomew Baker. Take notes. This is how you make parody song. You don't gotta we're complain gonna so, about... You know, we're gonna get so many fangirl comments just off that. Okay. Okay. And, and, anyway, but see, yeah. but see, that's exactly it. Because, like, this shows, like, this whole thing about him making eight videos in eight days... And like posting, posting on like College Humor and The Nerdist and Funny or Die, it's really like showing like he gets this whole thing. If you've seen the interviews, then he really understands like this sort of paradigm shift. He, he does, and he and he understands how to utilize it. Like he's not an he's not an idiot. Weird Al is a yeah. smart guy. He's not and some fogey. <laughs> I love that word. He's not a fogey. He's a dude who who keeps himself knowledgeable of the world around him in a very good way. Yeah, exactly. And you know, and he even said in, in a couple of cases that this might be his last like conventional album. Because, Which like, upsets oh, me. Uh, uh, but see at the same time like headlines are making it into he's retiring, but 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 <laughs> of course. But, but it's like no, he's just like he's considering that maybe just to you know, keep things more relevant, more timely. Like he should just like stick to maybe some EPs or or singles. Like it actually does. You know, in most cases, like when a classic artist says that, I'm like, what are you talking about? But for Weird Al, it actually makes sense. Well, because we're in a world where parody comes in the form of a single. Everyone makes their parodies a song. They'll occasionally put out a, a, like an EP of their parodies, but they rarely do. Mostly, like if it's your barely politicals or your Bart Bakers, they do it as a song. It's like a milestone. Yeah. Bart Baker put out a new parody. Weird Al wants to do that. He wants to capitalize on that by saying, Weird Al put out a new parody. Holy freaking crap! You know, it says a lot that he put out, like, a Royals parody, like, almost a year after that, after, like, that song's, like, commercial peak, and he's still generating so much buzz about it. That really says something about, like, his quality compared to these whippersnappers. These youngins with their... With the lazy approach to make with, with their smeared lipstick thumbnails <laughs> and their and their clickbait. We don't need clickbait back in my and, day. We didn't and, even and, have and, clicks. And their parody lyrical content that really only talks about how bad the artist in question is without really saying anything remotely clever. <laughs> Precisely. These youngins need to take some notes down on the Weird Al Snooze albums. <laughs> Okay, so, so yeah, in a nutshell, like both agree, like he's really doing everything right. Yeah, pretty much. This is going on my channel. I tend to rate on scale from like zero to a hundred, but I'll let maybe you can rank it on like one to ten. Yeah, I'd give it like a uh, eight out of ten. Yeah, yeah, mine would probably be around like the eighty, like like low eighties kind of range. Like there are a couple that are not amazing, but it. It's, but that's definitely the minority. Like yeah. most of these yeah. are just like fantastic all the way through. Like definitely some was more memorable. Like even like melodically in the original stuff. He made some more staples for his live set, which I think is great. Cause... Yeah, cause I, yeah, cause I've seen him. T I saw him twice on the Apocalypse, like on the back of Apocalypse, just because he comes to the San Diego County Fair a lot. Um, he was fantastic both times, by the way. But I, I just I hope he comes to the fair next year, just because I want to see how he does these songs, like, costume-wise. I want to see him dress up as Lord. I want to <laughs> see it happen. I mean, he could just dye his hair black. And he could wear the foil. I want to see it happen. I mean, I, I want to see mean, him walk yeah, out with it. He's, he's got the hair. So. He does. He could do it. He could do Lord, and I want to see it happen. I want to yeah. see him do the hand movements, too. Or maybe he can, like, dress up as, like, Dave Roll and do my own eyes with, like, the guitar. Yes. And, like, Have, like, a fake beard on yeah. and, like, put, like, a fatter neck on. <laughs> I want to see that. Yeah. 
like put in like a prosthetic butt for doing handy <laughs> for the Dude, game. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> put on. I want to see him put on um not just tacky clothes, but the tackiest and a tacky version of the Pharrell hat. Oh, that that was such a missed opportunity for the video. It was, but he could do it. He could have made like oh, a fluorescent it. Arby's hat, or like just just like made of sequins. Yeah, just sequins everywhere. Or like for doing inactive, like he could like have like a belly thing, or and like a neck beard, or sorry, no offense. It's, um, it's fine. <laughs> you know, what I mean. I'm offended, but <laughs> fine. I will sit this way now. Or like for word crimes, he can have some girls run. No, no, never mind, never mind. That's not that's not a good idea. <laughs> well, or, or no. like they have, they have notebooks like covering. I don't know. I, no, sorry. Have, have them dressed as the punctuations from the video. I don't think they can contort their bodies like that for like question mark. No, no, like just have like a question mark costume. Have like yeah. an exclamation point costume. Just have yeah. them run out on stage with it. Have Weird Al has a giant dictionary made out of balloons drop down. I think, no, like I said, I think he does have, he did add some more live staples to his set, which makes me want to see Weird Al again, because I haven't seen him since the Poodle Hat Tour. That's when I saw him live, is during the Poodle Hat Tour. Oh. Cool. Um, so, like, that's something I want, like, I want to see him again like, live, which I didn't say I wouldn't want to back in those, like, the last few records between there, but this one genuinely makes me want to see him live again. Yeah, definitely, because, you know, again, I saw him, like, for 2013, 2012 and 2013, great both times, and, you know, the fact that, the fact that this stuff is now in there is just, that just makes me all the more excited for him to come back here. Exactly. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I'm not really sure if we have anything else to talk about for this. I think it's already gone, lo gone long enough. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm good. I yeah, guys, check out um, Viral Rack. Um, he does, like, some discography reviews. I'm actually going to be... Doing a little review of it um, with him on the new Mastodon album in a little bit, completely the same demo, um, and, and maybe la and later on of the new Jack White one back on my channel. Um, he does a lot of discography reviews, um, not too many like standalone album reviews, but you never know if he's gonna pump one out every now and again. You never know what I got in me. I just always <laughs> come with something fresh. Sorry. Ne never mind. D don't go to his channel. Stay away. Stay far away. I'm a plague does, on the he internet. He does Let's Plays. He's a PewDiePie wannabe. Oh, yes. I love the Pewds. I'm not a barrel. Pewds is my god. I love him. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, maybe for the next review, like, you should be dressed up as Pewdie and I should be dressed up as Bark Vader Baker. Oh, I would I would totally do the Pewds if I had the hair. I don't, but I would. <laughs> okay, okay, but anyway, so, so yeah, guys, check out his channel. He, he's, he's good. He's good. And if you're coming here from him, then check me out, because I'm cool. Do it. Um, so, yeah, um, guys, let me know what you think of this album. If you've heard it, um, whether you agree with us, do you not? Do you just like what he's been doing? Um, and uh, share this around with anyone who might be interested. Like the Spin Reviews Facebook page down there in the description. May um, I suggest a topic for them to talk about in the comments? Do you think... Weird Al still holds a lot of relevance in today with the world of parody and the state that it's in. Oh. Get some philosophicalies up in there. Wah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, like the Facebook page and, stuff and all that promotional sellout stuff I said. Um, and yeah, um, check out our rack and stuff, and hopefully I'll see you on the next episode of Spin Reviews.